Hey guys, this is Pete. Uh, this is our first uh, actual installment of our monthly video segments. Uh, according to Pete, remember it's a monthly thing. Uh, we got a lot of really good questions over the last month. Uh, some that are very basic uh, component level questions, uh, electricity questions, questions about signal processing. We got questions about uh, schematic capture programs. We got a lot of questions. And we're really looking for, we, 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 want, we want to hit the frequently asked questions first and then ultimately get on to the more complicated stuff. So this, what I want to do today is I want to sort of establish a baseline of understanding in electronics. We're going to start at square one. What we're going to do today is we're going to start out with the basic concept of an electrical circuit, okay? Um, I, I actually, I, you remember my whiteboard from last week? Well, I cleaned it. Except for this guy. I didn't erase him. I like him. Uh, every time I've ever tried to describe an electrical circuit to someone, I try to put it in the most mechanical terms as I can. This! This is a toy my kids have in their sandbox, right? You put sand in the top, sand goes through the funnel, makes wheels spin, hits the ground. That's the whole show, okay? Now that is almost the exact equivalent of this thing, okay? Sand in the funnel equals the battery, okay? Just like yay. And when you put the sand in, current flows around to the load, the resistor here, which is this little spinny wheel guy, right? And then it goes around and it goes to ground. Um, now, a little note on, on the current flow that I've drawn. This is called conventional current flow. Most people probably know this, but I'll just mention it. The electrons actually go from minus to plus, but conventional current flow says, no, 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 current goes from plus to minus. What does it mean to you? Nothing. At the end of the day, uh, the numbers all work out to be the same. Uh, and this is the most basic circuit you're ever going to see, probably. And they all get more complicated from here. But for the purposes of our discussion today, that's what we're going to start with. This is a battery. Hello, I'm a battery. Batteries have a voltage rating. This one has a rating of 1.112 volts. And the voltage refers to how much pressure it is able to exert on the circuit and they have a current rating. This one has a current rating of 3,000 milliamp hours. It will push uh, three amps for an hour, or it will push one amp for three hours, depending on the load that you put on it. The current rating refers to how much, how, how, how many electrons are in the battery, basically. Uh, how much gas is in the tank? How long will it run for? What do you do with a full tank of gas? Let's assume this is a full tank of gas. You step on the accelerometer, and that's what we're gonna do next. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, I am a resistor. If the battery is our tank of gas, this guy, this is the car, okay? What a resistor does is it resists current flow, right? So if you put volts, if you put a voltage from this point here to this point at the bottom, you will get current to flow through the resistor. They have resistance ratings in ohms. Uh, the more ohms something is, the more it resists current flow. This specific resistor has a, a, a resistance rating of uh, 1,000 ohms, or 1K. They also have power ratings. This particular one is uh, rated for a quarter watt, and we'll talk about what that means. Uh, but a little primer for that, uh, power, power equals heat dissipation, okay? Um, they're made of different things. Uh, around here we use very generic varieties, uh, but they can be... Uh, uh, carbon, they can be metal film, they can be wire wound, uh, and different applications call for different materials. So now we've got our gas tank, and we've got our car, and now all we gotta do is drive! So here was my battery from the example, my, my, my leaky metal hydride battery. Uh, I'm not gonna use that one for, for the circuit that I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna use this one. This is four cells. These are AAA cells, these are dry cells, they're rated for a volt and a half a piece. And uh, the upshot of this is that I've got them stacked in series, which means I've got one here, on top of one here, on top of one here, on top of one here. And if each one is a volt and a half, I add them all up and I get six volts. So I have my example circuit set up here. I got a meter so I can show you something that's going on, right? So we hook this thing up. And of course, when you measure across the resistor, you see, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, that's not very interesting, I, I, I confess. So I got another 1K resistor. Oh, the anticipation. Can you dig it? And, and 
Um, hey, uh, uh, this is still not registering. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What the? Okay, so what's going on here? Well, now I've got two resistors in series, right? Because here's my ground, here's my plus, and right in between, I'm measuring half the voltage. And in fact, if I go up here, I'm measuring half the voltage again. What's going on, Pete? All right, hang on, stay with me, stay with me, because I've got a third one. And again, I'm across the whole thing, and I see battery voltage, and now, well, there's two volts, and there's two volts, and there's two volts. What does it all mean? I'll show you. Let's talk about Ohm's Law. I've drawn our circuit up here as best as I can. Um, here's our four cells, 1.5 volts a piece. Add them all up in series, they equal six volts. These guys, I got three 1K resistors here. When you add these all up in series, the same way, they add just like the voltages do. So we've got a total of 3K, or 3,000 ohms. Ohm's law, in its simplest form, is E equals IR. What does that mean? What that means is voltage equals current times resistance. E is voltage. I don't know why it's not a V. Don't ask me. Current is I. I don't know why it's not an A. Strangely enough. But R is resistance, so at least there's some coherence here. Now, this is just algebra, right? So what you can do is you can just transpose this, E over R equals I, or E over I equals R. Um, and you can basically, for, for any two of these things that you have in a circuit, you can figure out the other term. Very useful. And the other thing, the, the most, one of, one of the most important things is power. Um, power equals E times I, okay? Power in watts equals E, voltage in volts, times current in amps. Uh, it also follows, <laughs> believe it or not, that P equals I squared R and P equals E squared over R. Power, power is heat. In most applications, heat is bad. All right, right, getting back to that earlier question about what, how do I pick components? Well, for resistors, a lot of times, if it's just a DC thing that you're worrying about, and that's all we're doing here today, this is going to determine how big the resistor has to be physically. If, if this is the gas tank over here, and this is the car, right? Ohm's law is the keys to the car. This allows us to examine what's going on here, okay? So let's take a look at this circuit, right? We have our voltage term, we have our resistance term, so the only thing left is our current term. So how much current do we have here? We have six volts divided by 3K, or 3,000 ohms, and what that comes down to, you put this in a calculator, it's gonna come out 0 0.002. What's that, you say? That is two milliamps. Now, this being a series circuit, the current is the same all the way through, right? I don't have a branch here. I don't have a branch here. The current is all going the same way. If you take any one of these resistors and you say, okay, well, um, E equals I times R. Well, we've got two milliamps, right, times one K, Two volts! Remember the example when we put the meter across there? We measured here, we measured here, we measured here. And they were all individually two volts. This is something called voltage drop, okay? Now you may have heard the term voltage drop before. It does not refer to, oh my gosh, my voltage is dropping. No, 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 no. Picture it more like the Easter Bunny going around to kids' houses saying, here, have an egg, here, have an egg, here, have an egg. And by the way, this egg represents two volts. Now, the bigger question, why am I telling you this? I'll tell you why I'm telling you this. Because when you're designing something from the ground up, you have to know what to expect. If you don't understand how the circuit's going to work in the first place, and the circuit tanks, you're gonna be dead in the water. Ohm's Law is the most basic tool and the most powerful tool at your disposal to help you evaluate what a circuit is doing. If any of the stuff I did today looks a little whacked out to you or you don't get it, I highly encourage you to try this experiment yourself. 
Use some resistors of different values, okay? Uh, you know, mix it up. Four resistors, five resistors, something like that. Get a meter, hook them up, give it a shot, see if the numbers all make sense to you. If they don't, try it again, ask a question, whatever you need, uh, I'm happy to help. So thanks for watching, that's all for today. Keep the questions coming, you can keep submitting them to uh, feedback at sparkfun.com uh, within the subject line according to Pete, and they will get to me and we shall address them. Also check the banner, and uh, I think that's it. I'll see you next month. Thanks a lot.